clock and there is nothing you can do about it. Red Movie Rama! All right, everybody, to jump into this, I got my good buddy, RJ. RJ McCready, what's up, man? Hey, Rick, how you doing, man? It's uh, good to be on board, and it's always good to talk to you about movies, Rick. So I'm super excited for this episode as well, because it's a favourite movie of mine as well, which we'll get into later on. Yeah, yeah, RJ and I have a, a history. We used to do Dude Looks Like the 80s together, and then I just kind of handed it off to him. And now he's got his own show called Bite Size Cinema, and if you're not listening to that show, as soon as this one's done, or a crap, you can even turn this one off. Just go listen to his show for a while. <laughs> Keep it bite size, keep it safe, you know me, Rick, yeah. So, but like say, so Rick, I've got you to thank for that because you got me into podcasting. I started listening to his show and you invited me on to um, Dude Looks Like the 80s and we just had a ball, man, and then I got into it independently and yeah. I thought, hell, let's do a show, you know, um, myself and start something up and I just came up with Bite Size Cinema on. As you know, as you mentioned the other day, Rick, it, sometimes it can be a little bit bigger than a bite size. As Dan Bone said, it could be a lunch, <laughs> a lunch size buffet sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you, you had a uh, a two and a half hour long episode on Batman the movie, and I was like, "That's not bite size, dude." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're here for this one, man, because this is one of my favorites too, man. We're talking about three o'clock high. Uh, it, it's it's a top tier '80s movie for me, man, and and uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad I invited RJ to come on, and this is the movie he picked. It's like the stars aligned. Yeah, see, I, I the thing is, though, Rick, is that I remember uh, listening to your show, How Ming. Quick shout out to How Ming, yeah. you and Danny, um, <laughs> and I thought I was the only person that knew about Three O'clock High until I spoke to you, and you said, "Hell, I love that movie as well," because this film just seems to go under the radar and I don't know why because it's a really good high school 80s movie do you know what I mean it's a solid film yep uh, it's it's really you know I said this with Dan on, on the uh, the mannequin episode but yeah if, if somebody wants to ask you what the 80s is this is another example of just taking this movie and handing it to them and say here it is here's the 80s because this one's probably more realistic and I was telling my wife this when we were watching it. And I was like, "Look at look at the people in the school. Uh-huh. These are the people that were in the school when we were there. It, it, the, you know, the the hairstyles and everything were exact. They weren't overdone movie produced stuff. These are typical '80s teenagers that would fix the front of their hair, but not worry about the back. And the clothes were all over the place. It's a perfect example of the time. Yeah, absolutely." Um I, I, I thought that last night when I watched the um, the film again for this review, and I I was thinking I bet this is what school was like for Ricky Morgan back in the day because I've seen some of your oh, yeah, photos yeah. and stuff like that, and I've heard you mention that before because some people kind of um, do a homage to the eighties now, which is fine because you know the eighties has come back in a big way. Um, but I've heard you say it it was kind of like that, but it wasn't like that. But this film really does grab what the 80s was like in high school, like you just said, with all the um, extras. Because I imagine the extras in this film were the guys at this high school, I I would imagine. It's it's very possible. I mean, it it looks that way anyways, towards the end, especially, you know, when they're out at the the fight or whatever. But yeah, these look like typical 80s kids and... And we'll get into this as we go along, but just like Jerry having to drive his his mom's car to school and stuff, I mean, this is typical looking stuff where, oh, well, it's going to be embarrassing to drive their vehicle, but hey, you know, it's got super mom on the tailplate, so yeah, (laughs) you know, why not? (laughs) I I get that, Rick. Sometimes that's what you got to do, and it's certainly a big part of me doing that when I was growing up. There's some things that might have just embarrassed you, but you got on with it, and um, I... (laughs) I caught this film in the 90s, late one night, about 11 o'clock, ah. and I I was I knew it was going to be a good film right from the start when I saw the t- total credits, and it said 3 o'clock high, and you got KC Samuskio saying, you know, I knew it was going to be one of those days, and I just thought, this is going to be a yeah. good film, and then it just got, and it just yeah. went at a pace, and I just thought, it, it, it just did everything 
that I wanted it to do. And I just come away with a lovely sort of warm glow by the end of it. And there's no <laughs> there's no big title actors in this film either. And I think that's what makes it work in a way, because it just makes it sort yeah. of plausible or tangible or whatever. Yeah, even even the considerably hot girl in the movie is really not that hot, but that's kind of the reality of it, right? I mean, yeah. she's nice looking, but she's not like the supermodel looking girl that everybody go, whoa. She's just kind of your typical trying to be pretty girl, you know? Yeah, that's right. She's she's possibly upper class, but she's still got that sort of girl next door thing about her. And like you say, it's it's realistic, isn't yeah. it? Um, but yeah, yeah and, and it's... It's a funny movie as well, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? It just hits in all the right yeah. places, you know. <laughs> right. So, oh. so with that being said, let's just let's just go through it. So, you just said it. I mean, Jerry Mitchell is who we're following in this movie, and his alarm goes off. He wakes up, and you can't. I mean, you have to talk about the camera work in this too. It's almost like, you know. Uh, they've gotten very creative with a lot of the crane shots and all the stuff that happens in the movie. And that, that, that's a different subject with all this. But even Jerry laying in bed and rolling over and the camera rolls over with him and you look at the clock and the clock turns up right so you can see what time it is. It's all fantastic camera work. I was just going to say, Rick, uh, did Don Seagal direct this film? You know, with all those funny <laughs> camera angles. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it kind of goes, like you say, it goes yeah, up, like- it goes down. Yeah, looks like Sam Raimi did it, you know. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he did, we just don't know. Uh, yeah, you never know. But he, he wakes up and he realizes that he's late for school and his sister Bree is standing there. And she is the typical 80s younger sister that just stands back and watches the chaos happen. It's she's she's brilliant in this part because nothing excites her, nothing throws her for a loop. She's just watching Jerry create the chaos, and she's just like along for the ride. <laughs> yeah, that's it. To the point that he's trying to find his clothes to wear, and his clothes were left in the washer, so he pulls out his favorite sweater and throws it in the microwave <laughs> and heats it up so to be dry. I mean, it's dude is just having a day where everything is wrong. He gets out to his car, the tires flat on his car. Gets his mom's car, and they're heading out to go pick up his girlfriend, Franny. <laughs> and she she basically goes through the whole wardrobe of what you might wear in the eighties, doesn't she? When you look at it, and she kind of goes for it. What is it like a sort of gothic oh, yeah. style today? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, very gothic. And they even have a conversation on the way there of what do you think she's going to wear this time? What she's dressing like for this school season? Because. Usually it's, you know, psychedelic or hippie or... <laughs> yeah. And she comes out in all black and, you know, so you're getting that early goth kind of movement here. And it's kind of setting up that she knows that something's going to happen, doesn't she? You know, today she's got this... Because yeah. she's kind of like a bit of a psychic as well, isn't she? She's got like a spiritual spiritual guide or something like that. That's <laughs> <laughs> great. Yeah. And she wants to be. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, while they're driving, this uh, the the hot blonde comes by in her car, and Jerry kind of is looking at her, and he's not watching, and he goes through a red light, and the car is spinning out of control. And I love this shot because he's panicking, he's turning the steering wheel, the car is in a full slide, and they show his sister in the back seat, and she's not even reacting; she's just kind of looking out the window, like, "Yep, we're gonna die," but. No excitement whatsoever. I, lo- I love the way it sort of pa- it pans from Casey Samasico driving the car to the stunt man as well. You can just evidently see the stunt man. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It just goes from one to the other. <laughs> uh, the other thing, Rick, I was just going to mention here as well is the song by Jim Walker, "Something to Remember Me By." Boy, what yeah. a song! What a great song! What a yeah. catchy song! Yeah, it's so good. They use it at the beginning and the end. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I knew you was going to say that, Rick. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's use one song throughout the whole movie. So good. We used it twice. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, oh, dude. Then we cut to outside where all the students are coming into the school and we get to hear the legend of Buddy Ravel. 
And everybody's walking, and you. this is brilliant, man. This scene is brilliant because you get the whole backstory of this guy that's coming to school for the first day through hearsay, through people walking into the school and talking about what this guy has done and why he gets kicked out of every school. He punched his coach. He stabbed his coach. He, you know, broke a guy's nose, broke a guy's neck just for touching him and... This is just a brilliant piece of filmmaking right here to tell Buddy's story. I was going to say, Rick, I, I, I can't think of seeing anything like this any, in any other movie either, the way this sort of pans around. And again, you've got that sort of camera shot, as not you? Sort of go, so like a wide-angle lens. And you go between, mm-hmm. like, say, the jocks and the cheerleaders and the school nerds, don't you? So you get to see what the community is in this school, don't you, with everybody. It's just great. I love it. It's just such a great yep. building. Book. And the way that the story bleeds from one group to the other, and it's seamless, right? So they're all talking exactly the same thing at a certain point, and it switches to another group, so you, you don't miss anything about the story of this guy coming to this school, and he's a touch freak. And if you touch him, he, you know, does bodily harm and he's got brass knuckles that he uses for special occasions. And, you know, so they're really building it up and it leads all the way up to the school store, which Jerry is, is, uh, running. I mean, he's, you know, just working there and his sister's in there with him and she's telling him the same story and they look out the window, you know, Jerry's like, who is this guy? And they look out and here he comes. They see him getting out of his car, coming into the school and, uh, yeah. But he reveals a bad dude, man. Yeah, he's got the old muscle car, isn't he? He's kind of got that sort of James Dean bad boy look about him. And he's played by Richard Tyson as well, isn't he? He's the bad guy from yeah. Kindergarten Cop. He's, that's the only other film I remember him from, so <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody does. He's pretty much the bad guy in everything that he's in, so... <laughs> Do you need a bad guy? Yeah, give mm. Richard Tyson a call. Okay. <laughs> 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 and then following this we get another scene where we get another scene where the the blonde comes in and is needing some paper and a pen and i've always loved this scene because you know jerry talks about hey there's this new pen from wright brothers which yeah. is a term that only 80s people really know anymore is the wright <laughs> brothers who made ink pens you know <laughs> <laughs> And that's what's great about this film, Rick, is it's just like little parts like that in this film. They just put in, don't they? It's just, it's just magical. It just yeah. brings a, yeah. brings the uh, film along just nice. But yeah, he's bragging about this pen because you can use it like when you're in in your bed doing homework and you're laying on your back and you can write upside down and the ink keeps flowing. She's like, yeah, I don't do uh, homework in bed. In bed, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, yeah. And he's... <laughs> It's kind of like, oh, 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 and then then the, was it, the teal starts messing up, doesn't it? And he's just like having that sort of, jajun, jajun, jajun. Yeah, the, the the cash machine is is jammed up, and she gave him a five, and he's he's Google Gaga over this girl, and he can't even function when she's around. So he's trying to act cool, and then this happens, and he's just, <laughs> he's beating this machine, trying to get it open back up. She's like, look, it's fine. I'll come back later. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, he's just, uh, he's he fumbles all over himself whenever she's around. And then uh, we get to meet Vincent, which is Jerry's buddy. And typical nerdy buddy, right? This this could be also the buddy of Ragman in Trick or Treat. I mean, it's almost the same cardboard cutout best friend, right? right? Yeah, I never actually Nerd thought, actually. Glasses. Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good point. And vincent could quite easily be the main character in this movie as well if you didn't have buddy um if yep. you didn't have uh jerry mitchell this could be vincent's story yep. as well jerry's, you know what I mean? just, it's just... jerry's just a little bit cooler than vincent but not by much <laughs> no <laughs> but vincent is just that great <laughs> side character in, in this movie you know he's just got the old tank top and he's like the teacher's pet <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Because they he's on this they they decide to have this welcoming committee for, for for Buddy. And the teacher's going through a list that Vincent hands her. Yeah. And she goes down and she just picks a name and it's Jerry Mitchell's name. And so Jerry Mitchell has to go out and talk to Buddy and welcome him to the school. And Jerry's like, What? <laughs> <laughs> and one of the many trips where, where Jerry jumps up and says, I have to run to the restroom. He does that like seven times in this movie. Yeah. And when he gets to the restroom and he's at the urinal, who comes up beside him? Yep. Buddy Ravel. You know it. You know and it. And how 
awkward is this, is this scene <laughs> where Jerry's... Uh, he thinks he's chatting him up, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean... Basically. He, he's basically yeah. saying, are you trying yeah, to yeah. chat me up? You know, <laughs> is that what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> but the the fact that Jerry had even start the conversation while they're using the restroom... <laughs> Hi, I'm 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 Jerry, and and he even goes to give him a handshake, and yeah. you're like, what the heck? <laughs> oh man, yeah. And then uh, you know he says, "Look, man," he said, I, "I just they want me to do the stupid write up on you." And he's like, "You're calling me stupid? <laughs> no, 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 it's not what I meant at all." So they get this big confrontation where Jerry finally says, look, I'm sorry. Let's just forget about all this. And, and mum's the word. And he reaches up and he pats Buddy on the shoulder. And you just see the instant rage <laughs> in Buddy's eyes. <laughs> oh, touch freak. Oh, dear. <laughs> he takes him and... Puts the whole front of his body. It's it's one of the, the, the long, tall, stand-up urinals that we don't really see much anymore. But he pretty much puts Jerry's whole body in the urinal and just starts flushing on him. <laughs> and, just <laughs> slam, and then slams him into the mirror in the bathroom and shatters the mirror. And you're like, holy crap. <laughs> hey, you know what, Rick? What I like about it is when Buddy Ravel says, because you've touched me, you made me angry, Jerry. And he goes, I've got to do something <laughs> about this now. You know, I've got, to, I've got to wear this off, you know. It's like, what yeah. the hell? <laughs> you made me angry and i got to get rid of this anger somehow. So you and me at 3 o'clock are going to fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, it's like, again, it's, it's, it's setting up. Worst day ever, right? I mean, <laughs> here's this guy that is known to kill people, and just because you accidentally tapped him on the shoulder, now you got to fight him. <laughs> no other reason why. Oh, yeah. Just tapped him on the shoulder, and that's it. Fight's on, man. And what I like about here, right. Rick, is the next scene where you got, you got the guy in the cubicle, and his feet are going, aren't they? And all of a sudden, as soon as he is, it's Buddy Reveal <laughs> just like, stops to it. The old Reebok stop. <laughs> And then, literally, <laughs> like, seconds after this event happening, the whole damn school knows about it, do you know what I mean? Everybody <laughs> just, like, knows about this, like, three o'clock fight. Boom, that's it. <laughs> well, Jerry, Jerry is standing there in shock because of what just happened, and the kid comes out of the stall and sees Jerry and just takes off running. So th- there it goes, man. There goes the message. <laughs> there it goes. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> And I love the fact that Jerry goes back to the classroom and you can see he's in total shock mm. of what just happened. Yeah. Uh, hey, you hey, know, you know we, we, we decided, uh, you know, you know don't, don't, don't worry so much about, about uh, talking, talking to Buddy. We'll, we'll, we'll have, oh, oh, I already, already talked, talked to him. To him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that went well. Oh, yeah? What did he say? Uh, he said we're going to fight at 3 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, because you've got the look on Vincent's oh, face man. now going, oh, right, yeah. okay. <laughs> But uh, you get where, uh, after the class, <laughs> Jerry and all them come out in the hallway, and he sees Buddy, and he goes, Hey, man, uh, I just you know wanted to say again that dude, there's no sense in us fighting. And <laughs> Jerry, uh, Buddy turns around and he's like, Look, you don't get it, do you? At 3 o'clock, you and me going to fight. <laughs> right there in the whole class. I mean, the whole hallway is full of people. They all stop and see what's going on. And you you and me are going to fight, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes to, Jerry goes to his next class, and this is where you get the film students, right? The two guys with the camera that, uh, hey, can we, we, we heard about your fight. We just wanted to follow you around, make a documentary about what's going on. And <laughs> he's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, because it's funny, Rick. You know what? It, with this film... You think it might just be predictable, but it's not. Because when I first watched this, I did not expect a film crew, two kids to come out. Do you know what I mean? Stuff like that, just unpredictable stuff happens in right. a film which you think might just be predictable, but it doesn't. So it's clever, man. It's great. <laughs> so he tells them, you know, I'd rather you guys not. <laughs> I'm still I'm still in shock of what's happening. But he sits down in his seat and he sits down right beside, again, the blonde girl. And she looks over at him, and they're watching a it's a science class, and they're watching a film about insects. And she looks over, and she's like, I heard you're fighting Buddy Ravel at 3 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> and, he goes, 
Yeah. She's like, have you ever fought before? He goes, no. She just goes, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got the, uh, was it like the crab uh, scorpion fighting the sort of little locust yeah. or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> and it's just like the most yeah. aptest thing you're going to watch, isn't it, before you can have a fight. And do you know the um, little bit of trivia here, Rick, with this scene? Do you know the music that's that? playing? The music that, that is playing is from Jaws. Um, it's a bit when they go out to see. Yeah, so when they when um, Quint um, puts the barrels onto the shark, you've got that music. That's all... Dun, 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 and that's what they're playing in the background. Huh. Because uh, Steven, Steven Spielberg was attached to this movie and it's kind of like a little bit of a nod to him. So there you go. Just a little bit of trivia there, mate. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, there oh, you Jane. go. Yeah. Now you know why you need to listen to Bite Size Cinema. There you go. <laughs> That's it. There you go. A little bit of RJ McCready trivia just chucked in there, man. There you go. <laughs> uh, RJ knows his stuff. <laughs> oh, man. There you go. Just picking that one out. There you go. But uh, yeah, back in that classroom, man, with Jerry Mitchell... He's, uh, yeah. Everybody knows about this fight. He's, he's, he's not feeling this film either. So, again, he, every class he goes to, the subject matter is about utter defeat, right? Where some some big behemoth is absolutely wiping the floor with somebody else. I mean, he goes through, you know, Achilles. He, he goes through this, this film with the scorpion, and he's just like, and every time, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Saved by the bathroom, man. That's his exit. Stage left, isn't it? Right. But while he's going out to the bathroom after watching this film, he sees Vincent in the hallway. And Vincent is planting, <laughs> planting a switchblade in Buddy's locker and is going to put a note on the principal's office saying, you know, or principal's desk saying that, hey, uh, I saw this guy with a switchblade. You might want to check into it. So he's trying to frame Buddy to save his to save Jerry. He's trying to frame Buddy to save his buddy. <laughs> yeah, and he just said to him, you know, on that note, I'll put your name on it as well, um, Jerry. You know, <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, man. Dear. So, and they even have a scene where Jerry even says, you know what? I changed my mind. Don't, don't do this. He says, go ahead and. Sh-. So, Vincent has picked the lock, right? He's already figured out the combination of the lock, opens it up, and Jerry's like, Hey, just just shut the locker, man. Just stop what you're doing. So he just takes the switchblade and throws it in there and shuts it. And he's like, what did you do? Well, I thought you meant throw it in there. No. So now they're trying to break the, the lock open again. He can't remember the numbers. And it's just about time for the bell to ring so everybody comes out in the hallways. So they're trying to get done before that happens, and they, they don't succeed. <laughs> nah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. You get that scene, didn't you, with him just sort of twisting the sort of combination, didn't he? Boom. Yeah. And that's it. Out of time, guys. So out of that, it's time for a pep rally because there's a big ball game about to happen. <laughs> and even the pep rally is violent to Jerry, right? I mean, <laughs> he's sitting there. He sees Buddy up in the up in the rafters up there in the higher seats and just standing there watching what's going on. And these cheerleaders <laughs> are beating these dummies with uh, these baseball bats. And red glitters falling out of them like blood, and one of them knocks one of the, one of the dummies' heads off, and it comes lands in Jerry's lap, and he's just losing it, man. <laughs> yeah, you kind of get like a sort of skeletal sort of head, do you? Sort of, sort of bounce next yeah. to him again. <laughs> so what does Jerry have to do? That's right, go to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> I need the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he, this is where he goes in the bathroom and he's hiding, right? He gets in one of the stalls. He hears somebody coming. So he stands up on the on the toilet, locks the st- stall door, and he sees a pair of boots that, you know, looks like Buddy Ravel's boots. And you hear somebody say, open up or I'm coming in. And then he sees another pair of shoes and he's trying to figure out what's happening. He opens it up and darn if it ain't those camera guys again. So they take it upon themselves, regardless of what he says, of following him anyways. So that just adds to more chaos to everything. <laughs> this is where he runs outside and gets in his mom's car like he's going to leave for the day. And the switchblade is stabbed into his steering wheel with a note that says, I know what you're trying to do and you can't escape. <laughs> <laughs> Written in pencil as well. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. 
Uh, it's, yeah, it's getting pretty serious. And then he goes to crank the car anyways, and it won't start. He opens up the hood, <laughs> and somehow, I, I don't know if Buddy just has a tool set in his car, but <laughs> somehow he pulled the distributor <laughs> out of the engine. <laughs> Now, this requires some tools. I don't know if people know that or not, but you can't just pull it out. It don't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> it don't take many tools, but, I mean, you still have to have some tools to make that happen. <laughs> That's the 80s for you, man. I mean, look at what the A-team did, Rick, in a small amount of time. So there you go, man. Oh, <laughs> good point. <laughs> and this is where we meet Duke. Duke is one of the security people here at the school, driving around on a golf cart sees Jerry out in the parking lot, chases after him. You get a little foot chase. And for some dumb reason, Jerry put the switchblade in his pocket instead of just leaving it in his car. (laughs) And when Duke finally catches him and finds the switchblade on him, he takes him to Delinsky's office. And he's pretty much the, the disciplinary dean of the school. He, he looks just like Duke, doesn't he? Is he like the son, or is he yeah. the father of Duke? Because they just look like the same sort of character, don't they? You know, in facial facial features. I never went to a school big enough that had to have a security guard. Uh, and the fact that you have a a dean of a high school is odd to me too. Now, I'm, I'm sure that's pretty normal in some places, but. We never had anything like that. You had a principal, and that was pretty much it. <laughs> I had nothing like that at that uh, school. <laughs> we, we we just took care of our own business, I suppose you could say. <laughs> it definitely adds to everything, though, because, you know, this guy is very, very suspicious. You know, hey, Dean says, you know, hey, I caught this guy sneaking around. He's got a switchblade on him, and, this, and the Dean is obviously the guy that means business, right? Every time something bad goes on, I'm going to find out who you are. He's that kind of guy. And uh, very intimidating. And then he gets Jerry's records and realizes this guy hasn't missed a day of school in his whole life. And he's like, well, this can't be right. Why is this guy skipping school and he's never missed a day in his life? So they they think something's wrong in the system. And I love it, Rick, yeah. when uh, Jerry comes out and he basically has an alibi, doesn't he, to say, look, this is what's happened. And he just... And then, this, then the... Yeah. The guy goes, that is the worst story I've ever heard in my whole career. <laughs> it's, like, right. it's, like, it, it's like saying, you know, people. I know people like you, you play it safe, you keep under the radar, and then you think you can just get away with everything, then it's like, that's great. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets out with no damage done, and uh, at this point he walks out in the, in the hall and finds Vincent and is like, uh, or Vincent finds him and says, "Hey, I went back and I got the letter off O'Rourke's desk, which is the principal's desk." So he went back and got the note down, and took it away. So there's no evidence again of this whole story. Yeah. And while that's happening, this guy comes up in a in a long, you know, a long jacket and a beret. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, was, I, I I called him uh, Captain Sensible. You remember Captain yeah. Sensible from the eighties, man? It's just great. He's just. Right. Which is another thing, too, because I told, you know, Becky and I were watching this, and I said, if, if this guy showed up at our school, that would be norm. I mean, it was just kind of a normal thing to see somebody dressed like this, too. No, no, nothing odd. And uh, he's like, hey, man, <laughs> the accounting committee is, is placing bets on this fight. So, uh, you know, I just need you to last three minutes in the fight, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty enthusiastic he about it. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, wait a minute, you're placing bets on me fighting this guy? It's like, oh, yeah, and also, there's a bet going on about how many stitches it's going to take to fix your face. (laughs) (laughs) So if that doesn't make Jerry panic even more, you know. (laughs) Oh, man. And that's what's great about this movie, Rick, is just like characters like that that just get get put into this movie, do you know what I mean? It's just fantastic. And like you said, I had a feeling you might just say that was the norm. As well, with your high school, with characters like that, do you know what I mean? Back in the 80s, so. Yeah, if somebody came to school with a beret on one day and they normally don't wear one, you'd be like, yeah, okay. (laughs) No, So what? Beret and trench coat, man, and some, you know, army boots and things like that. Yeah, it's great, man. Red red bandanas tied around the neck. Yeah, that's no big deal. I mean. (laughs) Raspberry Uh, beret. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Prince. (laughs) Yeah. The 
throw that dude in uh, there somewhere, Rick. Sorry, mate. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's great. I mean, that's that again. I mean, there, that was a popular song about people wearing berets in the eighties. I mean, so yeah, not not a shocker. If you saw it now, it'd be kind of weird, but you know, yeah, you know. don't see red berets anywhere. Yeah. Uh, we go to the next class, and this is where uh, Vincent pulls the fire alarm. <laughs> get them out of class because there's the idea of getting together with this guy named Craig who apparently in the past has defended some uh, some people that were caught in a mess like this. I was just going to say it's another um, it's similar to the toilet scene here as well isn't it because he comes out and says to Jerry he goes look if you're trying to chat me up man he goes oh no 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 I'm not (laughs) 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 yeah (laughs) Yeah, the, the the language they use here is uh, not is pretty frowned upon nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what. I was, <laughs> yeah, yes. but, anyway, but anyways, it's like, look, he said, I helped you with your homework back in junior high. Oh yeah, I think I remember you. And he's like, anyways, I heard that uh, you helped this guy out, and uh, he's like, yeah. He said, uh, pay, charged him a hundred bucks. He's like, well, how much would it take for you to take care of Buddy Ravel for me? And he says, four hundred and fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Which, ironically, earlier in the show, we find out that the, the the school store has done incredible numbers for the past week. And there happens to be 460-some-odd dollars, I think, or something like that. It's close to it. Yeah, they that they've that they've got in the store. store. Selling a lot yeah. of paper yeah. that week, haven't they? Pa- sheets of paper. Yeah. And he, <laughs> and even the the owner of the store says, "Hey Jerry, I, I'm not comfortable with that kind of money laying around. So at the end of the school day, we probably need to take that and deposit it. You know, that way it's not stuck here in the store." So, and, and he's true because in in the mid '80s, yeah, 450 bucks is uh, that's a lot of money. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> you could buy about you could buy about uh, six gem boxes with that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he tells he tells Craig, "I'll get the money. I'll have it to you real soon." And while everybody's still outside, he makes his way back to the store to bust open the cash register and get the money out, which is an awesome scene. <laughs> yeah, because that cash register isn't having it, is it? It's not an easy one to get into, and <laughs> no, it, it's still still jammed up from before. He he takes the he takes like a letter opener and jams into it and it breaks it off in it. And the globe. The globe, yeah. Like this huge globe. <laughs> <laughs> Walks into the register and just slams it on the top of it, and of course it just shatters the globe. I mean, I'm like, who in the right mind would think that would even <laughs> do, do anything anyways? But anyways, it's funny. It's like a Jack Burton moment, isn't it? Hey, you never know till you try. <laughs> right. Then you get the fire extinguisher. And which kind of does the trick, but not without a cost, because when he slams this fire extinguisher down, it turns on, and the hose is just sp- <laughs> spraying everywhere, and it's knocking Jerry around because he don't weigh probably 120 pounds soaking wet. And this fire extinguisher is going off, and it's throwing him into stuff and knocking all the displays down, getting getting the the chemicals all over everything in the store. It finally slams him against the counter, and when it stops, the cash register just pops open by itself. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant, yeah. Bing! <laughs> but yeah, he uh, gets the money to Craig, and then Craig uh, tries to take care of business, finds uh, Buddy in the library. Walks up to him and is like, hey man, I hear you're giving... Uh, my buddy Jerry a hard time I need you to lay off of him he's like oh he's gonna get even worse now and just like before they they have a little confrontation too because they played football against each other and buddy even says oh yeah you're the wuss that that bled a lot or something like that you know that's it yeah (laughs) Craig makes the mistake of touching buddy and buddy pretty much breaks his finger then punches him in the face and knocks a couple of teeth out and then knocks down every every bookshelf 
<laughs> in the library. Goes down like dominoes, doesn't it? Eh? Uh, yeah, just one right into the other, and Jerry and Vincent are hiding behind one of them to just see what's going on. And you gotta love the look on the librarian's face too, man. This guy is, <laughs> is freaking out. But yeah, so they walk up and they see where Craig is laying there, and his face is all busted up. And then it cuts to later where Vincent comes back to and finds Jerry after he's <laughs> gone to the bathroom and gotten sick because Buddy saw them standing over there watching him do this. And that intimidating sound that he does in the library with the blood all over his finger. It's like, oh, crap. <laughs> so if he just knocked out Craig, who's this big guy, he's even bigger than Buddy. Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. One punch. That's all it took. Jerry Mitchell's now thinking, there is no hope for me to get out of this today. That's it. I am screwed. <laughs> totally. Yeah. It's like when you know that you're about to get in the ring with 80s Mike Tyson. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's a done deal. Yeah, it's only that, <laughs> yeah. And i got to say, the acting by Richard Tyson in this is really good as well. Do you know what I mean? His expressions, like you say, yeah. when he just goes, shh, and his expressions on his face. Yeah. It's almost like, you almost yeah. like the Terminator, isn't it, in a way? Do you know what I mean? Like, where Jerry's just trying to do everything he can to try and get away from him. It's just an unstoppable force, but it's great. Yeah, I mean he's he's the perfect bad guy here, and and really intimidating. Yeah, that's it. And I, and I think at the time where you couldn't, you haven't got any big name actors in this film, but I think that's where it works because you can't associate them with anybody else. So I, every time I see Richard Tyson, I think of him as Buddy Revel, you know, <laughs> and that's that's how oh, I yeah. felt when I was watching it at the time, you know. And yeah, it's great, man. Yeah, it's amazing how those characters kind of get you know stuck in that stereotype of what made them and you know uh but going back to the batman thing i remember when you know beetlejuice was such a big hit yeah and then when they said that you know michael keaton was gonna be batman you're going beetlejuice is gonna be batman yeah <laughs> and then from there i mean you pretty much think of michael keaton as batman so Absolutely, yeah. I've mentioned that on the show. I couldn't see Michael Keaton be not being Batman now. So, right. it's, uh, yeah, I'm totally sold with that. Well, like I said, uh, at this point, Jerry has gone to the bathroom and pretty much has tossed his cookies. He's <laughs> threw up his lunch, or, or he didn't have lunch. He threw up his breakfast. But Vincent and his sister, Bree, who just happens to walk into the bathroom, too, like it's no big deal. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. I thought that was kind of odd. It's like his... his his sister is just walking into the man's bathroom like, yeah, no big deal. Don't mind all the other kids and, in uh, there. <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh, Jerry gets the money back from Craig, but he gives Craig a hundred bucks anyways for his troubles. He's like, you didn't get it all? He's like, well, dude, he got his teeth punched out. I mean, which is fair, which is <laughs> fair you enough. You think he deserves, deserves something? something? Yeah, it's fair, dude. Right. Of course, Jerry's thinking about you know, putting the money back in the school, you know, in the stores. So. But then Bree, his sister, comes up with the great idea of, hey, why don't you get yourself suspended and locked up? Or, you know, she was referring to the old gun, sh gun smoke show. She said, do you remember what they would do when somebody didn't want to fight? They would get, you know, they'd break the law and get thrown in jail. That way they wouldn't have to have the fight. So the idea is to get suspended. And this could be my favorite scene in the whole movie where he's in literature class, and it's Miss Farmer, and she says, has anybody got a book report they, they want to share? <laughs> he goes, yo! <laughs> and what I like here, Rick, is just how Casey Samaschio, he just completely changes his character, doesn't he, to the kind of... Yeah. The character that he is to be in this sort of cool dude, glasses, smoking, so you just see how he can just change that role. And he does, and he does it really well. <laughs> he's, and his school status oh. has just gone up a few bars now, hasn't it, with everybody? Oh, yeah. He's just, he's he does a book report on uh, Honey Does Hollywood or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's it. He, goes, <laughs> he still goes, it's a good read. It's a good read. You know, he's got a cigarette, and, you know, he's like walking around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he lit a cigarette in class. That's it. <laughs> you know, you got the, um, the the dude with the red beret on his his face. He's going, ooh. <laughs> <It's> like, <that's> <laughs> <right>. <laughs> uh, 
And of course, you expect the, the teacher to make him stop at any huh? point. And he's like, it gets to the middle part where where Honey runs into the whole Australian football team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And he's walking around, and he's talking about all these sex capades that's happening in this book. And he walks back up to Mrs. Farmer <laughs> and asks her what her favorite book is. And he gets right up in her face, you know. So it's getting really, really hot here. That's and, right, and, yeah. <laughs> like she says, is this going somewhere? He goes, oh, it's going Stop somewhere. It's going right. somewhere, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he says to her, then he goes, what's your favorite book? And she goes, turn of the screw. <laughs> He goes, what a coincidence. Yeah, that's, that's fine. <laughs> and he just plants a big kiss on her, and then he passes out. Yeah. And he wakes up in the first aid room, and he's he wakes up, and he's disappointed because, you mean I'm not suspended? And the nurse that's waiting on him is Large Marge from Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Oh, right, okay. All right, I, I, I overlooked that. Yeah. Yeah, she was also in Trick or Treat, oddly enough. Oh, was she? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So she's like, uh, yeah, are you feeling better? She even offers him some cobbler because <laughs> he's hypoglycemic. <laughs> oh, and things turn the other way, don't they, from what he's expecting. You know, he's got um, the teacher's telephone he's number. He's like, you mean I'm not suspended? He's like, no, you're not suspended at all. She actually gave me your home, her home number and wants you to call her at home. <laughs> You need to definitely call her tonight. Definitely. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh, he ends up uh, walking back out in the hallway, and then he says, sees the blonde again. Her name's Karen, by the way, the blonde. And uh, she's like, uh, hey, Jerry, I'm having a, a party uh, at my house, and uh, uh, maybe you can show up. So now he's starting to get some cred here. Yeah. Don't know if it's sympathy or maybe they heard about what just happened <laughs> in the classroom where he – you know, made a move on a teacher, and now girls are kind of like, oh, okay, maybe he's worth looking into. Yeah, that's it. yeah, he's become a badass, isn't he? In one day, <laughs> it's like the creation of him. <laughs> you go back to, uh, he goes back to the store to check up what's going on in there, and when he walks in, Franny's in there, his girlfriend, and she keeps referring through the whole show. We kind of skipped over it, but she's always bringing up the fact of they need to get together and bond. <laughs> yeah. To fix some of these problems. With this spirit guide or something, isn't it? The spirit guide is telling them what to do. Ethan. Yeah. E- yeah. Ethan, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> Ethan. That's it. <laughs> yeah, she always says, I talked to Ethan and he thinks things are really shaky right now. <laughs> Who's Ethan? <laughs> oh, he's my spirit guide. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, you, you it looks like they're gonna do it. She's even made a little bed in in the store, which is shut down, but it still didn't change the fact that anybody could walk in at any time. But she's made this little bed out of the school mascot towels and supplies, T-shirts and stuff. And has even lit candles. Candles, there right. Yeah, that's to right. Make this yeah. Legit. But they end up doing a, they have a, a pretty intimate kiss. And then she just kind of freaks out and leaves. And it's like, well, okay. Uh, yeah, don't know. Don't know if she was intimidated or wasn't ready or what the story is, but... It looks like they're going to do it, then they don't do it. And luckily for them, they don't because the owner of the of the shop shows up and he's got Lieutenant Moldehill with him, which is a guy looking into the fact that this money's been stolen. And he already suspects it's an inside job. He even tells Jerry this, and he sees Jerry kind of squirming when he's telling him, so he already has an idea of what's happened. And uh, But Jerry's like, hey, can I, uh, can I get out of here? Yeah, go ahead, kid. You know, so yeah, so now as he he's created such a big mess because now he's got investigators looking at him for robbing a store. He's got this Craig dude that's been beat up. He's got Buddy still wanting to kill him at three o'clock. So it just keeps getting worse and worse. He ends up going to algebra class. Yeah, that's and he it. just puts his head down as this. This is this possibly the last class of the day, I think. So, we've, you know, all through the movie, it shows you times on the clock to kind of let you know where you are in the day. It's kind of like um, yep. high noon, isn't it, in a way? Like, you know, just yep. keep referring That's exactly to exactly what this is. Yeah, high noon and high yeah. school. Yeah. If it was only in space. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to bust you. <laughs> Good old. Oh, great movie. Um, oh, what man. I like about this scene as well, great. Rick, is... 
that that teacher in this class is just just wandering around, doesn't he? And as soon as they cheat, that's it. He, he's he's right behind them, isn't he? He just appears from nowhere. As soon as he's like, <laughs> he's like, hey, I can't allow this in the uh, classroom, guys. <laughs> This guy, I wonder if this guy's a real teacher because I don't think he's a real actor because he's absolutely terrible. You know how I feel about cheating, Jerry. And uh, so what's happened is Buddy ends up sitting right beside him in the class and Buddy's having trouble with the quiz and he looks over at Jerry and stares at his paper like, hey, let me see your paper. So he starts showing Buddy his answers and like you said, the teacher walks up right behind him and catches him, and he sends them both to O'Rourke's office, who's the principal. And this guy's like, all right, tell me what's going on. And Jerry's like, I was cheating off a of buddy. So he's trying to take up for buddy, thinking maybe it'll get him some brownie points, right? I don't want to cause more trouble for buddy, because that's just going to make it worse on me. <laughs> and the teacher's like, you expect me to believe that, Jerry? He's like, yeah, I do. So the, the principal gets smart and puts an equation up on the board, one of the questions off the quiz, and gets Buddy up to answer it. And Buddy nails it. So the whole reasoning about him cheating, who knows? I mean, maybe it's just, you know, Buddy knows something we don't know. Maybe this is a tactic he used before yeah, something. Yeah, I think knows. he's just toying with his opponent before the fight or something like that. So, yeah, just playing with him. Yeah. He kicks Buddy out of the office because he answered the question right and tells Buddy, I'm going to be watching you. So everybody keeps telling him, I'm going to be watching you. Uh, and then when they get out of there, Jerry approaches Buddy and says, hey, I thought we kind of were a team back there. And, and Buddy's still like, nope, you don't get it. We're going to fight. And then Jerry says, oh, wait a minute. I've got $350 in my pocket. I'll give it to you if you'll just, you know, call it off. And like I said, Buddy's thinking, man, I could buy a whole bunch of jam boxes with that. <laughs> <laughs> so Buddy says, okay. He said, but don't you feel terrible, though? I mean, you didn't even try, you know, challenging his manhood or just what a, what a wussy he yeah. is. And for me, at this point, Rick, this is a real pinnacle point in the movie. And it's so clever how, you know, you've got Jerry's yeah. done everything he can to get out of this fight. He's paid him off and now he feels bad about it. So it's really clever how this sort of takes a turn. Yeah, he he, he actually climbs on the top of the school <laughs> and, yeah. and thinks about it. Then he comes back and confronts Buddy and says, I want my money back. And he's like, too, too bad. You've already given up. He said, all right. He said, the fight is back on. And I, I've always loved the scene when he leaves and he punches that locker to show how yeah. tough he, how mad he is at Buddy. And then he, when he turns the corner, he's like, oh, my hand. Busted the hand. Yeah, that's it. It's great. Yeah. You and me are going to fight. Bang. That's it. And he's like, ah. Yeah, it's great, man. And we're down to the last five minutes of the day. It is 2.55 in the afternoon. And this is where you got prep work going on, right? You got... Mitchell going back to his classroom, getting his books, walking out of class. And uh, the teacher's like, get back in your seat, Jerry. And he goes, flunk me. You know, fail me. I don't care. Yeah. And he walks out. You see Buddy getting his brass knuckles ready. I mean, so you're getting all this stuff. And then when the bell rings, when Jerry walks outside, the whole school's already there. Everybody's there. Yeah, this is it. As soon as that bell rings, everybody's taking position and they to watch this fight. That's it. Everybody. It's great. <laughs> everybody's there. And then Buddy and, and Jerry come face to face. And then O'Rourke shows up and says, ain't going to be no fight today. He's breaking it up. And he makes the mistake of touching yeah. a buddy on the arm. Tells Jerry to go home, and he grabs grabs Buddy, and gra Buddy just punches him out right there on the spot. So the fight's back on. <laughs> I love it, because he, he goes, sorry, Mr. O'Rourke, I can't allow that. And he just like, smack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, then you get, then the, you camera get the camera guys, get up close get to Buddy, 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 buddy the grabs the camera, camera and breaks the camera. The camera. So, so those, yeah. guys those guys are, you know, are, you know they've, been they've been tagging through all this, through all and this, this is the end of their journey because he breaks, he their, breaks camera. their camera. <laughs> and then, doesn't Franny come out at this point? She goes, oh, you're going to... And he just, like, grabs her face, and he? he? just, like, <laughs> boom. <laughs> 
you're going to get to him, you got to go through me. And he just grabs her face and just slings her. <laughs> Yeah, then Duke and Delinsky show up. Oh, this is great. Cool. He's like, move, 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 move. Yeah. <laughs> Same deal. Duke walks up to him, and Duke gets punched out, and Delinsky just stands back and like, hey, I'm not, I'm not getting any of that. Oh, that's pretty. It's a the, fight, the fight, man. I mean, man. They, I mean they, they start they throwing, start throwing down, down, and, and just like you just would like expect. You would expect. I, mean, I mean, Jerry's. Jerry's just trying just to trying jump, on the, jump on the big guy, and, you know, and, you know, and, and, and hold on to hold him, on to and him, then he's, and running, then he's away, running away. And of course, of course, you know, buddy's, you know, buddy's landing, punches landing punches and knocking him across, knocking him across the, the, whole the whole school parking, school parking lot. lot. <laughs> yeah, but like I say, Jerry, Jerry just sort of holds his own a little bit here as well, doesn't he? He puts a couple of punches yeah. in there, doesn't he? And he sort of he's thinking, yeah, I might be able to do this. But then when he gets into like that spot it's of bother, old um, old Vincent turns up, doesn't he? <laughs> It's like, yeah. it's like you're just springboarded from somewhere through the air, isn't it? Whoa, well, you get a shot where Jerry Jerry does a surprise punch and punches, you know, uh, Buddy in the face. And it, like, busts his nose. He's bleeding a little bit. And he's in shock that somebody's actually landed a punch on him. And he just goes into beast mode. He, he does this punch that he does on Jerry, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's just incredible. And that's and at this point, Jerry's down in front of a car, and this is where Buddy pulls out those brass knuckles. And right when he's getting ready to pound on him, that's when Jerry or Vincent jumps on his back. Oh, that's hilarious. And tries, and tries to help him out. But it didn't last for long. <laughs> <laughs> but when he does, he knocks the brass knuckles out of, out of Buddy's hands. And then Bree... Runs over and grabs the brass knuckles and gives them to Jerry and says, Cripple the dick. Cripple the dick. <laughs> yeah, that's a great scene. Yeah, it's fantastic. Then you get a slow mo thing where they're facing off and uh, Buddy goes to swing and he misses and Jerry pulls back, puts a haymaker on him with those brass knuckles, and Goliath has fallen. <laughs> I love it. When, was it Mr. O'Rourke, isn't it? He goes, Don't F this up, Mitchell. <laughs> like that, even though Rook's on his side, isn't it? You know, it's just great. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows that Buddy's a bad dude. I mean, that's you know the the record shows. And but as a you know a, a person of that stature, you can't say those things, right? But it, it's even got to that point where the principal's even on the side of you know take care of this guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go and sort it out, Jerry. But yeah, punches him in the face, knocks him out. School goes crazy, and then. uh this is where um, uh, the lieutenant shows back up, and he's wanting to take Jerry and Buddy and uh, take them and question them about the money that's missing. But they go to get Buddy, and just like Michael Myers, yes. go. I'm glad you said Michael Myers. I was going to say it's either <laughs> Michael Myers or Jason. He's just like disappeared, isn't he? There's a whole crowd of people, yeah. but he's just yeah. like, gone, boom, that's it, vanished. Yes. <laughs> and then O'Rourke tells the lieutenant, hey, let Jerry go. He's had enough for one day. So... They're still investigating, so he's still in some trouble for that. But he goes back to school the next day, and he's opening up the store. And this guy walks up and wants to buy some paper. But he just wants to buy a sheet or two, and he wants to pay a dollar or so a sheet. So what's happening is the school is all on Jerry's side, and they're all donating money to the school to make up for the money that's missing. And uh, get Jerry out of trouble. So they're buying individual sheets of paper for a dollar a piece. And the dude with the the, the the beret comes in, buys 30 sheets for 30 bucks. <laughs> like, man, he must have cleaned house. Yeah, it's, 30 bucks. <laughs> yeah, so he's made for 30 bucks, isn't he, on that, I think. So he's done well. Man. So uh, they're raising the money. And then everything gets real quiet. And Buddy walks in and walks right up to the counter. Holds his fist up to Jerry's face, and then he sets his hand down and opens up his fist, and there's the three hundred and fifty dollars. So he gave the money back, and he even kind of gives a a nod to Jerry of "good job, man." I think it's a good bit yeah, on this yeah. film as well. I like the way that ties off because he's kind of like got a little bit of respect for him, yeah. isn't he? You take, yeah. So, and that's that's a that's a a pretty cool thing because you know. In most cases, when somebody like this, you know, the the anger doesn't end, right? You you outdid me, so now I'm after you even more. Whereas this, he's like, "Hey, kudos to you, man! You you stood up and 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 became a man." Yeah. So yeah, I kind of dig that, man. Speaking of respect, 
as soon as he walks away, Miss Farmer shows up. <laughs> <laughs> and she walks in. She's like, hello, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, that's it. She gives him a kiss. Walks up and just... Yeah, plants one on him in front of all the students. So the students just like, whoa! <laughs> and, and again, you've got that Captain Sensible dude, haven't you? And he just got that expression gone, ooh. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and then that's when Karen comes in as well to buy some paper. And again, she's, you know, uh, warming up to the idea of Jerry as a guy. Of course, he's like, hey, I've, I've already got a girlfriend. So there you go. But yeah, then you kind of get the, uh, it's the legend of Jerry Mitchell, right? I mean, now it's the, the outside of the school again, but now you got the legend of the story of Jerry fighting, and the story's been changed, right, to where I heard Jerry wanted his money back, and, you know, uh, Buddy had stole the money, and he told him he'd fight him at 3 o'clock to get his money back, and so, the you know, it becomes all this big legend. Yeah, <laughs> and and some of the stories are kind of true, aren't they? Because he has gone through this whole yeah. thing, and he's kind of earned that right to have that legendary st- status at the school, and it's, like I say, something that happens at the beginning happens at the end. You even have one of the girls who started the conversation at the start, she ends up saying, I heard that Jerry Mitchell was a real badass, and then that's it, isn't it? And then you've got the... <laughs> Um, Jim Walker song again, haven't you? So good, they use it twice in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Something to yeah. remember me by. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, man, this this movie is just it's just fantastic. Uh, it, it it moves at such a pace, man. It never stalls. And I I think I've heard you mention this before as well, Rick. Is that in the eighties? So you, this film has got everything for me. It's got comedy. It's got drama. It's got good characters. It moves at a pace. Um, it's got memorable characters, memorable moments in it. But ultimately, it sort of tells you a bit of like if you've got a problem, go and deal with it. You know, and that's yeah. kind of what they did in the eighties, wasn't it? You know, kids dealt with these issues. Okay, Jerry, he was. I'm sure about it, but predominantly, um, Buddy Ravel has kind of made a man of Jerry, hasn't he? And I think there's right. an underlying sort of tone there. If ultimately, that's what he's trying to get him to do, really. He's trying to teach him a lesson. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and that's the thing about this story, too, because, I mean, bullying is a whole different thing now. And I don't want to downplay that, but Buddy Ravel is the bully. This is <laughs> this is what a bully was in the eighties. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe to an ex- to an extreme, but every school had this guy that was kind of like this that would fight anybody, anytime, anywhere, and you know that's the guy that somebody had to eventually shut down to to make him stop being the cock of the walk, right? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, this this movie hits home on a lot of levels because you know it's blown out of proportions a bit, but this is how it was. I mean, there was there was a bully that I ended up fighting in school back in the day. So, yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it 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 kind of rings true. <laughs> I had something like this myself. You know, I've had a, I've had a little punch up at school where all the kids are all sort of like in a circle, sort of. Okay, you might not yeah, win, yeah. but you kind of gain respect because people know that you had a go. And after that, people kind of right. lay off you, you know. So, yeah, you know. So, um, yeah, all round, this film... I mean, you've got the John Hughes movies, haven't you? Like Breakfast Club and Sixteen mm-hmm. Candles, and they're great, and they deserve their title, but I'm not really sure how this film is not up there as well. I just... it's kind of puzzles me sometimes, yeah. you know. I'm surprised as well that it's not more popular because it's it's got everything that you want in an 80s movie and it's done extremely well. Yeah. Um, and the director for this film, he went on to go and do music videos. So it was kind of like he's one off, really. He, he did a yeah. load of uh, U2 music videos after this. So <laughs> it's looking on his IMBD yeah. status. So. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of what we were saying earlier is even though that you're watching this very well laid out story the camera work and everything in this is just really really top notch yeah. i mean it's it's unlike any other 80s teen movie you're going to see as far as the camera work yeah it's um like i say some of the uh camera angles when um jerry mitchell opens up the laundry doesn't he and you can see his face and he's sort of yeah you're yeah. looking at yeah. it from a pov perspective yeah. aren't you out um so stuff like that and that's great man and it 
I'm telling you, there there has to be an influence from from Evil Dead because you know in, in Evil Dead there's a scene where the camera's up above the rafters and it moves across to see what's on the floor and you're seeing the rafters go by. It's the camera's panning, but in this, in this, when Jerry's being sick in the stall, the camera is up in the air doing an overhead shot, and it comes past the stall, and you go over the top of the stall and focus back down, you know, in face front with Jerry too. So it's it's a lot of similarities. Uh, like I said, it's really well done. It could have been could I mean, you never know. The director could have bumped into Sam Raimi and said, "Hey, I did this camera angle. Maybe you should try it in your film." You don't know, do you? Because back then it was everybody mingled in with each other, didn't they? And you know, to try and get things yeah. to work. Um, well, first Evil Dead was what uh, Evil Dead was uh, about four years earlier than this, so it might have just been, hey, I figured out how they pulled off some of those shots. I'm gonna use it in my movie. <laughs> and uh, Casey, some oh, is it Samaskio? I can't never pronounce his surname. Yeah, something like that. He was in the other film I yeah. remember him was uh, Young Guns, which would have been possibly around about this oh, yeah. time as well. Um, and he's also in Amazing Stories, which is Spielberg, wasn't it? Where he played the turret gunner with Kevin Costner. I don't know if you remember that one, Rick, but uh, that's another film yeah. I remember him being in. So um, he was kind of a hot commodity for a little while. He was popping up in a lot of stuff, and then all of a sudden it just stopped. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why, but I mean, it's like there for a little bit. He was like in everything that was coming out, and then it's just instantly he was gone. It's yeah, because like, um, he was in. He's also in, even... he was in Stand by Me as well, wasn't he? He's one of the kids in that. Um, so he's like you say, he's one of those yeah. guys that just sort of turned up. But, um, yeah, I don't know what happened to him. Just faded out. <laughs> yeah. This this movie is again. I just I think it's a it's a top notch eighties film. So if you like, like you said, the John Hughes stuff or any of that, then this this is a must watch. Yeah, go check it out. Absolutely, like I say, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Um, I don't think you'd be disappointed. It, it, it still holds up today, I think, no. as well. You know, one hundred percent. Like I said, it it doesn't it doesn't lag. I mean, it is moving so fast, and you're cramming so much into this one day at school that it's it's pretty impressive when you think about this movie just in general so yeah rj and i both say you need to check this one out <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah well man uh if you will take take just a minute i know we talked a little bit about your show and stuff but let everybody know where they can find you and what else you got going on what episodes you got coming up all that good stuff yeah um so yeah by size cinema the it's in the title or sometimes as i mentioned at the beginning sometimes it can go on a little bit longer depending on which guest i have on um but generally, I try to get two or three, maybe some more shows out per month. And it is, um, like I said, I just run over a film, all the good bits and stuff like that, a bit of trivia. Um, but you can find it on iTunes, Spotify. I used to be on social media, but I'm not anymore. So, um, But you can still find it on, um, if you put in Bite Size Cinema uh, Podcast Google, you can find it on there. But yeah, I'm, I'm having a whole ton of fun on there. Um, I've got you coming on the show, Rick, soon. In fact, I think that's next week, isn't it, for yeah. Flash, Flash Gordon? So it's going to be a Christmas yeah, episode. Talking about some movie I've never seen. Exactly, mate. <laughs> yeah, you need to um, go away and watch that, Rick. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> go check it out. Um, talking about mm. High Noon, I've, there's a, uh, I've got Outland coming out soon on yeah. there as well. So I've been... Um, I've been meaning yeah, to produce that, so that's, uh, that's coming out soon. So that's my next one. And then me and, me and Dan Bone will be doing Home Alone as well um, for Christmas as well. So that's another episode to look out for. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So there you go, man. Sweet. Well, man, I, I appreciate you coming on. It's always a blast whenever we get together. And, and uh, yeah, glad you came on, man. Absolutely, Rick. Yeah, like I say, I'm, not, I'm really enjoying listening to all your other shows as well, mate. Uh, you, and, you and Billy Stewart and that, so... Um, oh, yeah. every, every time I listen to that show, I'm kind of going, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> it's warm, warm, poor man. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Well, folks, we will see you later on. Adios. 